How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob. I'm the general manager here at Smedding Performance and today we're going to be on the dyno with a 632 cubic inch big block Chevy. So a quick rundown on this engine. We did a few upgrades for this customer. Step one, we did a different piston pack that has lateral gas ports. It's 11 to one compression and it's also running a 0.9, 0.9, 2.0 micro thin ring pack from Total Seal. So those thin rings are gonna give us less internal friction on the engine and the lateral gas ports are gonna help that top ring seal up under pressure and the extra compression is gonna give us a little more compression. Second, we did the AFR 377cc fully CNC ported cylinder head. Um, beasts, they have solid roller springs with a Jessel Sportsman aluminum shaft mount system. We're running a solid 842 diameter comp lifter, roller of course. And the camshaft is 271, 285, about 680 intake and exhaust lift on a 110 plus 4. This thing is going to make some noise. We are also running a big Edelbrock Super Victor number 2, 4500 flange manifold with a Holly Sniper Stealth. So it's a fuel injected throttle body that looks just like a standard Dominator carburetor. And this customer is also going all the way with a full serpentine kit from Concept One. So it's going to have AC, power steering, alternator, water pump, the full nine yards. So we always install the water pump from these kits. So you can see he's got his bracketry. But we want to install the pump so we can make sure there are absolutely no leaks whenever we fill this engine full of water and run it on the dyno. So, and this engine was designed on paper to make over 900 horsepower naturally aspirated on pump gas. So that's what we have in it. We have regular 93 high octane fuel straight out of HEB's pump. And uh, we're getting ready to start it up. Michael's got everything hooked up on the dyno. It's 100% ready to go, it's just waiting on me. So I've already flashed in a bass tune that should idle just fine and should do the things. We're gonna let the engine fully warm up to operating temperature because it is solid roller. At that point, we're gonna pull the valve covers off, shut the motor down, and we're gonna run lash on the rockers to make sure that they're all where they are supposed to be. So. No more chatting, let's get this thing fired up, start the warm up procedure, and we'll get back to you guys in a second. So once we start this engine, we are running a HyperSpark ignition system. So once the engine's idling correctly and seems to be running good, we're gonna go in there, set our static timing, and make sure that the distributor is oriented in the correct position, so that way the EFI system can control the timing and adapt it on the fly to help smooth out the engine. Okay, so the 632 is coming up right now in temperature. We got 105. Like I said, we're just gonna let it idle here until it's about 160. 
and then we're gonna jump in the dining room, pull off the valve covers, and check our lash. The engine is fully warmed up, so we're gonna go ahead and shut it down, pull the valve covers off real quick, and check our lash. Okay, I have finished lashing all the rockers nice and hot. Um, these modern camshafts, you actually run them pretty tight. So we're running 10 thou hot lash on the intake and 12 thou hot lash on the exhaust. Valve train is super stable and the camshaft is fairly gentle on the ramp. So we can run it a lot tighter and not have any wear issues. Um, so Michael's just now gonna finish up putting this side valve cover back on. And then we can start the engine back up, check the tune up, make sure everything is safe, and then we can make our first hit. All right, this motor is fully warmed up. It's actually the next day. We just ran out of daylight yesterday playing with it. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna get to making our first hit. I've already got a tune up loaded into the system. That'll work really, it should work really good from our other 632 combos, kind of as a base tune. So we're gonna make our first hit here and see what it looks like. I'm gonna start with only 30 degrees of timing and then we'll start adding a little bit more timing as we go and really find the correct timing curve that's gonna give us the power we're looking for. Okay, there's our first hit. Again, we're only running 30 degrees of timing right now, but we can already see that it's carrying power very nicely. Let me get you on a better frame. So on the first hit, we made 892 horse that peaked at uh, 6,000 RPM, and then it carried nicely to 6,400. And here's our torque curve. So now we're gonna do the same pool, but we're gonna put two more degrees of timing in it, and then we'll overlay the curves and compare them against each other.
Okay, so the red curve that we see here is the second pool with 32 degrees of timing, and the blue curve is the first pool with 30 degrees. And not too sure why we have a hiccup right here, but for the most part, the extra timing made a whole lot more torque down low. And then as cylinder pressure rose, it didn't really make any difference at 6,000 RPM, but then after, as cylinder pressure starts to drop, it did help out a little bit. So I'm pretty comfortable with 32 degrees of timing. I'm gonna leave that alone there. And now I'm gonna start playing with the fuel curve and refining it and see if we can break the 900 horsepower mark. Okay, playing with the fuel curve a little bit. Here, let me uh, let me change the overlays. There we go. So, on the blue curve, we have a targeted AFR ratio of 12.5 to 1, and the red curve, I leaned it out to 12.8 to 1, just a little bit. But with an engine of this size making this much power, small changes are going to give us a large result. Like if we have a uh, if we find a way for the motor to make two more percent, you know, horsepower, well, two percent of 900 horsepower is 18. So even if we only made a two percent change with this much power, it's going to make a big change. So we're now making 905 horse. We're going to keep following this trend until we see the drop off. So I'm going to now try 13.0 to 1 AFR. We'll re-overlay and we'll see what the differences are. Okay, so leaning it out from 12.8 to 13.0, you can see that we actually lost power quite a bit everywhere. So we're gonna go back to 12.8 to one, that seems to be our best number, and we're gonna back it up. We're gonna make another hit and make sure that everything is kind of staying exactly where it is and where it should be. Since this is going into a streetcar, we're doing our tuning on a full exhaust with an actual muffler system. And the tune-up is pretty much there. It's perfect, it's running great, it's making over 900 horsepower. But now we're gonna unhook the exhaust and we'll see how much power this thing can actually make on its own. So what's interesting is that even with the exhaust fully uncorked, it actually didn't make any more power. And the reason for that is actually because there's so much EGR coming out of the headers, I don't think our fan can pull it all out of the room and some of it's getting recirculated through the motor. So the horsepower gains of running an open header are being negated by the engine consuming 
those EGR uh, gases. So, but nonetheless, we've now back to back made 905 horsepower, which is just awesome on pump gas with a really mild solid roller setup. Super, super cool. Coming up in the future, we do have that 1,000 horsepower 632 lurking in the room. It's gonna be the next level up. It's getting a completely redesigned cylinder head. It's gonna be 13 to one compression running race fuel. And that motor should easily make the 1,000 horsepower number now that I've seen how much this motor made 11 to one with a conventional big block head. Super cool. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.